Salam, you are watching the international daily roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Greece accused of limiting food at refugee camps. Guatemalan paramilitary sentenced for the rape of Maya women. Syria demands an end to sanctions and foreign occupation. And Palestinian detainees continue their boycott of Israeli courts. 40% of people living in refugee camps in Greece are being denied food. Rights groups have said that this is a result of deliberate decisions by the state. The right-wing government in Greece has stopped providing food to people who are not in the asylum process. According to the International Rescue Committee, there are over 16,000 people living in refugee camps in Greece. This includes people who are waiting for their asylum claims and those whose applications have either been accepted or denied. However, new catering contracts for the camps show that there's enough food for only around 10,000 people. Over 6,000 people who are not part of the asylum process have also been excluded. According to the IRC, children, who are as many as 40% of the people living in these camps, are going hungry. Greece has introduced a slate of changes to the assistance offered to refugees and asylum seekers. This, along with processing delays, has forced many people to return to camps. The Greek government has also designated Turkey as a safe third country, which means that people coming in from Syria, Afghanistan and other countries are denied access to the Greek asylum process altogether. The number of people arriving in Greece has also reduced, owing in part to a crackdown by border forces. Backed by the European Union, Greece stands accused of illegal pushbacks, violence and arbitrary detention of migrants. A Guatemalan court has sentenced five former paramilitary soldiers for the rape of 36 indigenous women. The attacks took place between 1981 and 1985 during the country's brutal civil war. The five accused were part of the Civil Self-Defense Patrol, or PAC, which was an armed group recruited by the military. They have been convicted of crimes against humanity for the rape of Maya Aki women in and near Rabinal. During the trial, survivors stated that the pack had rounded up all the men in the village and disappeared them. The women were subsequently rounded up and raped. An estimated 200,000 people were killed and 45,000 disappeared during the civil war. A 1999 UN-backed commission found that the military had committed genocide, mainly targeting the indigenous Maya people. Over 600 massacres carried out by the military and paramilitary groups have been documented. In its verdict on January 24, the tribunal noted that sexual violence against Aki women was generalized and systemic. It added that the women were also subjected to domestic slavery. The five accused in the case have been sentenced to 30 years in prison. Syria's Deputy Foreign Minister Bashar al-Jafari has reiterated the government's demand for the removal of sanctions. He said the measures are responsible for the falling living standards and loss of livelihood of millions of his country people. Al-Jafari made these remarks during a UN Human Rights Council meeting on January 24. He added that the war and the occupation of Syrian territory by foreign powers has severely impacted human rights. The US has occupied a large share of the country's southeastern region. It has also set up the Al Tamf military base in the Homs province. US forces have been accused of stealing Syrian oil and destroying infrastructure. This has been coupled by the imposition of crushing sanctions. Al Jafari stated on Monday that these amounted to a form of economic terrorism. War and unilateral sanctions have pushed 12.8 million Syrians into food insecurity. The country is also facing critical shortages of medicine and fuel. Unemployment has surged and nearly 80% of the Syrian population is living below the poverty line. Sanctions have also prevented the reconstruction of civilian infrastructure, including schools and water facilities. As per the United Nations, nearly half of Syria's hospitals were dysfunctional in 2021. UN experts have also stated that US sanctions violate human rights. Besides the US, part of Syria's Raqqa and Aleppo provinces are also occupied by Turkey and the Syrian Golan Heights have been occupied by Israel since the 1967 war. And finally, 500 Palestinian administrative detainees have boycotted Israeli military courts. The mass protest action entered its 25th day on Tuesday. It has been organized under the slogan, Our decision is freedom, no to administrative detention. The illegal and arbitrary policy allows Israeli occupation forces to imprison someone indefinitely without either charge or trial. Arrests are made based on secret evidence reviewed by the Israeli intelligence agency, the Shin Bet. Warrants are issued and renewed by regional military commanders. Detainees are not aware of the charges against them and cannot therefore challenge them in a court of law. 
proceedings take place in military courts that are not bound by international convention and fair trial standards. Palestinians are also subjected to torture and other forms of ill-treatment during the interrogation process. As part of their protest, detainees have refused to appear for their hearing. The boycott covers initial hearings, appeal at court, as well as the Israeli Supreme Court. A statement by the detainees describes Israel's military court as barbaric and racist. It also argues that administrative detention itself serves as a form of psychological torture. If and when detainees are released, they often arrive at the last checkpoint only to find out that their detention has been renewed. By the end of 2021, the Israeli commander in the West Bank alone had issued almost 1,600 detention orders. The measure is also leveraged to punish Palestinian detainees who go on hunger strike. That's all we have on this episode of the International Roundup. For more on these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for regular update, updates on all the work we do. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.